Amen. This time I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's sermon. to see all of you. And we have a couple of new folks too. Um, so how's school going? Over! Oh, this is the best time of year, isn't it? Yeah. Is it are any of you sad that school's over? A little bit, yeah. You get bored now in the summer? Sometimes, yeah. On Mondays and Wednesdays? Wow. You got, it, you got it scheduled. Wish I could schedule boredom. That would kind of be a nice idea. Here's a great present, and I'm actually going to use this. I'm going to challenge you kids in the Sunday school to do a mission project. And you know what I want you to do? I want you to sponsor a giant rat. A rat? A giant rat. You see this picture up here? Can you see the rats? Can you, it's not a very good picture. Can you see the rat? This rat, including the table, uh, the tail, is called a hero rat. It's called a hero rat, and with, if you count the tail, it's 30 inches long. This is how big this rat is. And they raise and train these rats for two special purposes. Let me tell you what they are. What? Fighting? No. Fighting? What the heck? Lucas is right. They change it for saving lives. Let me tell you what these rats are trained to do. In lots of parts of the country where there have been wars, some army or some group of people who were trying to kill other people have buried landmines. Have you read about this in school? Landmines, it's a d explosive things. I don't know how big they are. They're all different sizes, I guess. You bury it in the ground. And what happens when you walk, you're walking through a field, looks like a regular field, you step on one of those landmines, what happens? It explodes. Usually, and you'll see in a lot of countries, especially in the third world countries like Africa, you go into villages and you'll see a lot of kids who have one leg missing, both legs missing, kids who are blind, grown-ups who have lost a use of one side of their body, or they've become blind, or people with badly scarred faces. Because these landmines, when the war is over, do you think the armies and the soldiers go back and collect all the landmines? They leave them there. And so there's hundreds of thousands of people, and mostly children actually, that step on these landmines. The war may have been over for 10 or 15 years now. And you go out in a field, and the landmines are still there. And so people are still dying from a war that's long over. These rats go out into the fields and they sniff around and when they come to a landmine they stop and they keep their nose down and then somebody goes out and carefully digs up the landmine and they get rid of it. And the rats don't, aren't heavy enough even though they're that big. They're not heavy enough to set off the landmine but they find them. And so all over the world this, there's an organization that does this, raising these rats, and these hero rats, that's what they call them, these hero rats go out, they find all the landmines, and they can do the job in just a couple of days that it takes human beings weeks and weeks to do. Isn't that amazing? Another thing they do, one of the bad things in the world, and those of you who have medical people in your family, you could ask them about this. One of the bad things in the world is tuberculosis. Now, in America, we don't see tuberculosis. It's a lung disease, it's a breathing disease, and it's terrible, and people just waste away. In many parts of the world, uh, tuberculosis is still active. So now, what they will, this is a little gross, but they will send these rats to a medical facility and ask everybody who comes into the clinic to spit in a cup. 
That's kind of bad, huh? No. Oh, no, okay, good. Anyway, so, you know, go in there and they give you a cup. You, pooey, you spit in the cup. They hand it to the rat. The rat eats it. And if you have tuberculosis, the rat can identify that. Huh? Is that amazing or what? And so these rats, they, they don't do anything. The rats don't do anything. Don't get started on what the rats do with it because we don't, they just smell it. And then they can tell if people have tuberculosis. And it's some unbelievable, um, if, uh, if it takes uh, human beings so many days or weeks or even months to find, uh, to test everybody who has tuberculosis, these rats, oh, a rat can clear as much land in the landmines in 20 minutes as humans can in two days. And one giant rat can screen the same amount of people in seven minutes that it takes the nursing staff and the doctors to clear all day long. And they can do it all in 20 minutes. How do the rats like, tell, tell the humans that they have it? Have How do the rats tell the humans? Yeah, like, they well, they tried giving, letting the rats write the prescriptions, but nobody could make out the handwriting. <laughs> no, there's a medical person there who says, w w you, have, you have tuberculosis. Yeah, then they do more testing, of course, but the rats just stay there. I mean, they're trained to do a certain response to these kinds of things. You know, like, like your dog Gilbert, who's so well trained. When you say, Gilbert, sit. Gilbert sits immediately. When you say to Gilbert, sit up and shake hands, he does it immediately, right? He does not. <laughs> does he really? Oh, good, okay. Well, it's just like training a dog, it's, except this is very specific kinds of things. Okay, here's the thing. If we send this organization uh, $20, that will screen 100 people for tuberculosis with these rats. That will pay the cost. If we send them $36, that buys a year's supply of bananas for the hero rats, which I guess is a favorite thing they need. $36, a year's supply. They don't need a lot of bananas. Of course, bananas are cheaper. Um, if, if we send $50, um, this will pay for a local school, like a school that you go to, to go and see the training of these rats and see how these rats work. So that would be an interesting field trip, right? Oh, that would be an awesome one. Especially when they say, you want to hold him? <laughs> what do you think, Victoria? Would you hold a rat? No. I don't know. They look pretty cute. They look pretty cute. And if we send $100, you can build a special nest for the breeding of rats. We're not going to say anything more about that, but at any rate. So, let's, let's raise some rat money. And the other thing we'll do is, we'll also, we'll, we'll raise some rat money and we'll talk about it. We'll get together and talk about it ourselves, what we're going to do. And these folks will be helping us with rat money. And also, I want you to think of good names for rats. So when we, George, okay. So when we send the money, we will uh, also send the names we suggest as they train new rats, okay? Sure. What do you think? Um, you want to do this? It's a summer project. Sure. All right. We'll talk more about it later. We'll make some plans, and then we'll announce it to the congregation.